Welcome everyone. Welcome. This is the first event in an online series that is kicking off uh, today, June 8th, 2020. And my intention was that this would be live in person with an option for live streaming. So people like Tom, who's not here in Chicago, could be with us. Um, but as it would be, we're in a pandemic. And so staying indoors and doing this online for the moment seems to be the best option for all of us. So that's what we're gonna do here tonight. Uh, I wanna, um, here's the agenda. I'm gonna give some opening remarks about our topic. Then we are going to um, have a Q&A with our panelist, Cheryl Jackson. Uh, and then we're gonna have a closing activity to help you integrate everything that we talk about tonight. And so the topic of this evening is, are you in a crisis of clarity or faith? That's what we're gonna discuss. Um, so let me tell you why we're here discussing this topic. I did a little research today and uh, this number might be slightly higher for those of us who are workaholics. However, uh, the statistics show that one third of our life or 90,000 hours are spent working. And so the experience we have in our work life matters. So that's point number one. Why else are we here and why does this matter? We are in a massive awakening right now on planet Earth, if you haven't noticed. This time of pandemic, what I've observed in myself and with clients and colleagues is that we're all taking a pause. We're all taking time to say things were going a certain way for many of us very fast uh, and we were sort of losing touch with our inner heart and our connections and this time of actually quarantining and staying home for many people has had us be really deeply reflecting on our pathway and so we are in this time that people are waking up wanting change that has come out of quarantine, but now, now we are in this amazing time where there is civil unrest around race issues, which are not new issues, that is for sure. There's just a greater awakening with more people as to what has really been occurring and happening. And so there's a greater demand for change. And that also um, is impacting our lives in many ways, how we, how we live, how we work, how we may become involved in activism. Um, another important reason why we're here talking about this is really um, what I do for a living, if you're new to me and you're just getting to meet me, is I'm a career coach and spiritual guide. And there is a pretty common question that people come to me for some form of the following. I really wanna find my life purpose. And I would like to be able to turn that into a mission in the work that I do. And for a lot of people, they're saying, I don't know what that is. I have no idea or I have some ideas, but I just don't know how to translate it into work. And so this series in whole is about being able to fulfill on your purpose through your heart, through your genius, through what you're really here and what you were born to do. And so, um, that's why we're here. That's why we're in this discussion. That's why we're having this event tonight. We're gonna to have this event. Um, I've lined up dates for the whole summer, every other Monday night. Um, what I expect you're gonna get, you're going to get um, some education and enlightenment tonight about the difference between when you are in a crisis of clarity versus faith. What does that look like? Um, hopefully insight out of that for your own career path. And then, um, you'll write an intention for yourself at the end. So I wanna ask a question to get us started in this discussion. And let's see where you fall. And if you wanna pop your answer in the comments here, this quiz with three possible answers, um, I'd love to see where people land. So this is gonna help determine, it's a starting point of, are you in a crisis of clarity or faith? Um, do you find yourself in this situation? A, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. B, I have ideas of what I'd love to do, but I don't know if they're feasible. Or C, I know my path and I'm on it. So go ahead and start typing in comments if you can find yourself in one of those three areas. Um, 
A, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. That is somebody who's definitely in a, a crisis of clarity, not sure what it is that they want to do. And oh, there's Cheryl popping in. Fantastic. Welcome, Cheryl. Hi. Ah, lady in red tonight, looking yes. beautiful, looking beautiful. Color, color to this, so. Yes. yes. I am so sorry, but I am here now. Oh, great, great, great. I'm just giving some opening remarks so you can just breathe and enjoy and take it in. And uh, in about eight minutes, we're going to get started with your interview. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Okay. All right. So excited to see you, Cheryl. Just woo, filled with joy and good energy. Thanks for being here. Um, okay. So we we're talking about this quiz of three questions. And um, I'm looking at the answers people have popped in. A few people have said, I'm on my path, that's great. I know what I want to do, I'm on my way. Great, so we have several people who said, you're on your way of what it is that you wanna do. Well, let's talk about when people are coming to this um, inquiry saying, I'm confused about my path, I'm not, I'm stuck. Sometimes that inquiry is really about uh, they're unclear and they're not sure. Sometimes it's about, actually, it's just really faith and you're afraid. So let's talk a little bit about the clarity side when it's really an issue of clarity. This is what happens when you're not really sure what it is that you wanna do. And when people come to me with this question of what's my purpose, can you help me turn it into my career? I would say 80 to 90% of the time, people actually know what they want to do. It's really like 10 to 20% that they don't know the answer to that question. And so usually when somebody works with me in one to three sessions, we can become clear on what that is. We can, okay, here's what it is. Doesn't mean that faith part doesn't need to be worked on. There may be some fear to work through, but it's usually, usually we know the answers. When we don't know the answers, when, when it's like, nope, I'm exploring it, but I'm stuck. It's, it's one of two things. It's either one, you are in a situation where you don't know yourself well enough yet. Mm -hmm. This was me at about 28 years old, walking into a seminar, a self-help seminar. It was like a four-day thing, trying to find myself. And I was a lawyer. And I just knew that something wasn't right. And my heart was calling me to a different direction. Um, and I was in that seminar and I really just didn't know who I was. I went to college and law school because that's what everybody wanted me to do. I didn't do it because it was in my heart. I didn't know who I was yet. And I meet people who are in their forties who still don't really know who they are because they got onto a career path, followed what society said would be a great career. And then it's at 40 years old, for example, could, could even be 50 that people are saying, hey, I'm not sure who I am. And listen, there's no shame in that because we really are in an education system that tries to put us into certain buckets. You'd be great at being an accountant or a doctor or a lawyer or a police officer, right? Like these well-worn paths. But here's the thing, today's world, there's a lot of people, Cheryl's gonna be an example of this, that are not on a well-worn path. People that are paving the way, that are creating something new. I would imagine that there are several of you here that have been paying attention to the racial issues going on and you've probably learned of a bunch of organizations and people working in activism that are professions and careers you've never heard of. So there are people out in the world doing things as healers, coaches, activists that are all a part of this new world order and what is needed to, to, to come through in today's day and age that there were no educational programs set up for this. So for people who you know, are saying, I don't know who I am, again, no shame in it. It's like, okay, you're just going to go through a discovery process to understand yourself at a deeper level. And I wanna give you a piece of insight about that in case anyone here is in that situation. 
if you're in that situation of, oh, man, I'm, it's like an identity crisis. I'm not sure who I am. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with my life. What you want to do in that period of time, it's what I call an incubation period. You want to protect yourself. You want to go within and you want to have a deep examination with yourself. Great time to hire a coach or have some system or safe space where you can do this. I have a um, guidebook on my website that's free, you can download. It's called Unleash Your Genius. Um, and this talks about that, it talks about this internal time to go within yourself and incubate and understand who you are and what's meant to come out of you next. If you do have a sense of your path and what you wanna do, but the real problem is, man, I feel afraid. I feel unsure. I don't know if I could do this, so maybe it's not the right path. I've had a bunch of coaching sessions over the, the time of the quarantine where people said, I'm totally confused about my career. And in just one session, it, it's like they knew. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. They're just afraid. Something didn't look like it was going to go well. You know, their industry kind of tanked for a moment. And you got to rethink things, right? So here's the big piece of advice I want to provide about if you find yourself in that crisis of faith. What I've learned is that we wanna be able to get in our genius zone. Our genius zone is what we do with ease and joy and fun. It's our natural talent, we were born with it. And it's just fun and easy to actually do for work. So work actually becomes easy. If you're struggling with a crisis of faith, your hard work now is bringing in faith into your work life. And when I say hard work, it's what I mean is discipline and effort. Like it's not something you just casually say, oh, I'll have faith. No, to bring, like if you have a big dream, we're gonna talk to Cheryl about big dream. I can't wait to hear how she did this. Um, you get a big dream, you need to bring in faith practices to help you fulfill on it. So when I say that, I mean really two essential things. One is like the principles, spiritual principles that will support you. One that I lean into and work with my clients around all the time, and many of you will find yourself probably nodding when you hear me say this, is the idea that God or the universe always provides. Always. Um, people get really afraid in terms of pursuing dreams about money. That's the big one, right? Oh, how can I quit my job and make money? Well, I know you think your employer pays you, but really God is providing everything for you. The universe is providing. Just right now that happens to be through a paycheck. <laughs> and so what happens when you take a leap of faith, you become an entrepreneur, you follow your path, um, you really realize the truth, which is no, it's always being provided for in some other way. Again, if you check out my Unleash Your Genius guidebook, it goes into more depth around this principle and also outlines several practices. I actually put 22 practices in that guidebook that are in moments of fear, how do you turn to faith? And there's simple things like breathe and drink water. I did that today, I had a little anxiety issue come up around technology today. Um, and some of them are more in depth, like um, you know, writing affirmations, using affirmations, those sorts of things. Um, so what I want to, um, I just want to see if there's anything else I want to offer before we switch gears here. I think we, oh, one more thing I want to say, which is going to just bring us into um, where we'll leave with our final activity. So on the subject of faith, tying that piece up, if you're in a faith crisis, if you're knowing the direction you want to go, but feeling fuzzy or unclear because really fear is behind it, Here's the first step. The first step is to set an intention. Not a goal. Goals are okay, I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm talking about this is a spiritual practice to set an intention. An intention is a statement that you write in the present tense and you usually start it with I am and it's your written word committing to how you desire your situation to transform in its essence 
So I'm going to give you an example. At the start of quarantine, I was feeling a lot of confusion myself. And so I wrote this intention. I am whole and focused into a single clear beam of light. So to me, I've been living into this intention over the course of the quarantine and I'm extending it out into the summer months. It's, it's for me, it's a statement that I say like a prayer and I know that I'm living into it. And what happens is with our word, this is a spiritual principle, with our word, we create our reality. With our thoughts, we create our reality. So that is something that is working on me and continually, if that is something I say, that I believe, then clarity is just starting to come and happen all the time. Things are happening that are helping me create clarity. So when we wrap up tonight, we're gonna have all of you write an intention for yourself so that um, that supports you in getting out of whatever your crisis may be, clarity or faith. All right, with all that said, my goodness, Miss Cheryl Jackson, Coming off of your big conference, which you did online this year, uh, the Grit and Grace Conference. So uh, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I've uh, outlined some questions that I want to ask you, and, um, but I don't know what your answers are going to be. So we might, we might weave a little bit in this time that we have with you. But as I let you know, and I want to tell our um, participants tonight, what I really am wanting to talk to you about is this idea that, you know, your story is that you, you've had these amazing um, um, career positions. Uh, you worked in the governor's office at one point. You were the first female CEO at the um, Chicago Urban League. Um, you ran for President Obama's seat when it opened. Um, so you, you're, you've been in the political game. Um, and then most recently, you've been with um, AAR Corp, right? That's the name of the company. Um, and you were a VP there for, I don't, was it like 10 years? It was a substantial yeah. period of time, right? Um, and, and then over the last, from what I know, let's say two years, you, you launched your company and then you finally, even you launched a company while you still had a corporate job. And then you did eventually release the corporate job to be an entrepreneur um, full-time. So that's what we want to talk to you about tonight. I know that that journey, there's like probably a moment of a lot of confusion and then clarity about what you want to do. And then, um, then there's a faith path to step into it. So this is the story we want to hear. Are you willing to get juicy with us this evening and tell us? I love juicy. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> great, great, great. I can't wait. Okay. Um, so I want to just, I guess I, this feels like the place to start. Um, did you, did you, did this start for you as like a discomfort of like, something's not right anymore? Or was it more like a moment of clarity of what you wanted to do? Like, how did, the, how did this start, the idea of the change? Thank you, great opening question. I wanna say hello to chat. I love talking directly to everyone in the chat. So uh, if you could just, just type hi, make me feel welcome. I'm a little nervous. So <laughs> I have quarantine hair, so you know, I'm not like looking my best here, so. Um, but I, I, I am glad to see, oh, hi, love you. Oh, no, Callie. <laughs> there we go, you're getting some love, Cheryl. It's so good to see you. So yes, those are encouraging because it's like you're talking to a green light at the top of your computer. So, um, so I like to talk to people as much as possible. So I'm so glad to see um, those. Sally Lou Loveman is on, awesome. Tasha, Audrey, Monica, this is awesome. Callie, everybody, hello. Um, you know, I, to answer your question, now that we, I said hi to everybody, um, I find that there are three things that um, force a pivot. So I hosted Pivot Conference. Um, there are three things that um, allow us or facilitate a pivot. One is it's forced on you, some sort of crisis. Um, something external to you that forces you to pivot. And then the question is, how do I adapt and, um, and really see the gift of uh, the crisis? 
The other is strategic, you know, when you're really thinking about, um, you're mapping it all out and, and you're making strategic moves to, to, to progress through life. Um, and then, then there's, uh, so you've got your, your crisis, your st st uh, strategic or opportunistic. Um, and then there is that, um, that, that pivot that comes um, from some place of uh, angst when you know something's not right, but you can't put your finger on it. Mm -hmm. So I've had all three to take place uh, in my life. Um, the opportunistic um, one, or I'm sorry, opportunistic, strategic, and the forced. And they all come with their own set of kind of issues of coming to terms with, um, with this. Now, the, the opportunistic is sort of, you know, probably the easiest because it's an opportunity and sometimes it's, you know, being made um, by default. You're sort of defaulting into something, a, a change. Um, but that strategic is hard um, and uh, the forced pivots are hard because, you know, you have to catch up with, um, with reality. Um, so it just depends on, when I went into, <clears throat> excuse me, the Chicago Urban League, I left the, the governor's office where I was the communications director, the press secretary and press secretary, and I moved to the Chicago Urban League. Um, that was, um, it was a combination of force because I was sick of working for, you know, the job I had. <laughs> and y'all can figure that out, why I was sick of that job. Um, I was over it. It was, it was a toxic work environment, putting it mildly. Was uh, that a governor that went to jail? Bad board Ooh, okay. okay, bad board governor, Rod Blagoy. He's out now, though. So... <laughs> Yes, it was, uh, it was Blagojevich. It was one of the hardest. I still have P PTSD with that job. When I drive by the Thompson Center, uh, I, it, I have this physical reaction. Uh, it was a very tough job. And, and it's always a tough job. Those jobs are tough, but it made tougher with that environment. So I was kind of, you know, ready to go. Um, and then uh, trying to find the right opportunity. And uh, so I went for that. I really worked hard. I wanted that opportunity. So that was, um, that was a different kind of uh, fight. I think the, the biggest one was the, the leap that required the leap of faith. Uh, so mm -hmm. that one required clarity. The, the one that required a leap of faith um, was um, the decision to run for U.S. Senate. Um, uh, former President Barack Obama's Senate seat. I was CEO of the Chicago Urban League. It's not like I ever had that in my head that I would run for uh, office. And um, it was scary. You no, know, I, I didn't know another, um, well, Carol Mosley Braun, she had run, but it, it wasn't, um, it was, I wasn't a likely choice, uh, obvious choice. Um, um, it, you know, I didn't have a huge rah 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 uh, band behind me saying "Go, Cheryl, go!" Mm -hmm. of of you know, movers and shakers and influencers. So, but getting off of the fear was was the hardest thing. I, you know, I went inward, a lot of prayer, a lot of sitting with myself, um, trying to you know come to find a sign look looking i was looking for signs a smoke signal something okay i'm like god show me something and um i could all here's the thing is you could always keep pivoting when something doesn't work just keep keep pivoting keep keep trying it doesn't there's no one right uh answer or pathway uh, there's multiple uh, pathways that will lead you where um, God is intending for you to be. Uh, so I, I read one quote that says, uh, he will find you where he has placed you. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be in a place that he cannot find you. Um, and as I get older and I'm understanding that um, is, is, is a powerful, powerful quote. So I, I came to this point where I released it. And I said yes to this opportunity. I said yes to my fear. It didn't mean that I was unafraid. Um, but I said yes to it because there's always something else to be done. Uh, so that was, that was good. The, um, this, doing what I'm doing now, it required, uh, you know, someone said, one of my G2 coaches said something during Pivot. 
your the problem with anxiety and dissonance comes is when your head tries to convince your heart to do something mm -hmm. instead of the other way around and so that's when you're feeling anxious or fearful it's usually your head trying to rationalize your heart. Maybe that was Callie. Callie, did you say that? Um, so I don't mean, throw it up, Callie. If you said, she said, yep, I said, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, girl. I knew it was somebody that said that. Somebody brilliant said that. Um, and, um, and and Callie, if you want to go ahead and elaborate, uh, the head and the heart uh, is the gut. She is what she said. The head and the heart is the gut. And you really want alignment there. But when you're trying to just in your head space, trying to, you know, override your heart, um, that's, that's, that's a tough space. So I've been in that space. I knew in my gut, you always know, you always know, you always know, uh, always know. I think the, um, so that was the, the, the uh, another tough decision is, uh, the timing of when to leave. I, I knew that I, uh, my time was coming to a close at AR. I had gotten all the juice out of that that's so can we, can we talk about that? This is where the real stuff is, right? Like, this is the real stuff. Like, were these things happening at the same time? Did one force the other? Like, how did that happen for you? The current, you mean my current transition? Yep. Yeah, I, I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't move into this role with an intention to go into entrepreneurship. I thought maybe it would be a different corporate role or whatever. Uh, I was with AAR for nine and a half years, a little more than nine and a half years. And um, three of those years were very bumpy personally. I went through breast cancer and divorce and you know all the uh, people around that. Um, but I had a lot of fire in my belly. It was a new role. I was um, traveling the world and learning about the world in this job. Um, and I thought that maybe I would you know, uh, look for um, a corporate opportunity. But someone uh, came to me and asked me to do a TEDx um, uh, talk. And I knew I wanted to speak about my experience of um, learning to, um, you know, blend grace with my grit. And uh, the epiphany I had that grit is, you know, was it, um, Kate Duckworth, her first name, the author of the book, um, Grit, uh, Angela Duckworth. Um, and she talks about it is a key indicator of success. And it is a good indicator of success. The problem with only focusing on grit is in limited supply. You got a limited supply of your ability to physically just fight your way through. Um, and I learned that. So, um, so the happy epiphany of grit and grace and I gave the talk just to give the talk. I was like, well, you know, if I'm really honest and transparent, um, maybe what, there'll be one person's life that I'll help or impact or resonate. That's, that's all that I went in there with it. Um, um, my intention um, was, and, um, and it impacted a lot of people's lives. It really resonated. And so one thing sort of led to the other. So I did a little more and gathered some more people. Then that's like, well, let me gather my friends who uh, have similar kind of experiences to share this learning how to blend the two. And that resulted in Grit and Grace Day. Um, I still hadn't intended really to do that full time. Wow. Uh, after I did it, uh, the day, I immediately went on the road around the world. I was in three countries in Africa and came back, New York, and then back to Paris. And, and I just didn't have it in me. I could not, it was gone. The um, drive, the energy, um, the excitement, um, or the, you know, the, I, I like solving puzzles juicy pro that the puzzle was it was done okay <laughs> it was for done. your job or for my job for, for your job. okay yep. yep and it just became a chore so when that happens yeah you become less tolerant to deal with the stuff the bs everything gets on your nerves um i mean it you, you just yeah it the, the 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 curtain is pulled back and and you're just not in alignment and um and so I had been thinking about it for about a year, um, uh, actually about a year and a half, like, is this time, is it time, is it time? And I decided um, it's time. 
And so in June of last year, I, I stepped away. So, um, and decided to do this full time. And, um, and we just see where this will go. That's amazing. That's amazing. And what I, what I hear in your story is it's common. It's, it's really common. It's like when, um, some, it, it like often like following a higher calling or something bigger comes out of first, like, I'm not happy where I'm at. And so the, the way out that I have seen and I coach clients around is often, well, go do something that you just would enjoy. And it sounds like that's what you did. Like you, you had had this personal experience um, and anybody I really recommend watch Cheryl's TEDx. You can Google it. Um, Grit and Grace TEDx Cheryl Jackson. And, um, you know, so you give this TEDx talk that's just, here's how I triumphed. Here's how I've gotten through difficult things in life and the career that I've had, you give this talk and all of a sudden you're getting people are really responsive. So now the world is sort of calling you forth yes. and saying, Hey, Cheryl Jackson, we have an idea for you, That's right? Me. You were just being you. You didn't even have a plan. And this, this happens. Like it's just go out there and do what you enjoy and do what you love, um, help people. And it started to reveal itself to you. Um, so thank you for sharing that because I didn't know how it all unfolded for you. And, and it's a, it's a common pathway where people think that it's like everybody knows their dream and just goes for it. No, it was sort of like shown to you. Right. And you said uh, a little about, well, you opened the, this uh, event with um, the power of intention and we create our reality uh, in three ways. Uh, we create our reality with our thoughts um, and then the next layer is words, mm -hmm. uh, and then the behavior action. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how you create whatever it is that you're, you're in your reality, which is why, um, intention, setting attention, praying is so important because the power of words is so important to put it in the atmosphere. Um, but thoughts are important. That's a good place to start. Um, and, and for me, thoughts, um, I recently, I've, I've done this intuitively, I didn't articulate it, but um, I encourage people to, um, to invoke their childhood. You know, when, when we're children, we pretend, we pretend a lot, you know, we, um, little kids pretending playing house or playing um, whatever, um, you know, um, firemen or whatever it is that you play as a child or pretend. Well, we need to have that same sort of, um, bring that same sort of energy to thinking about um, what's next in our lives. Just start with pretending, uh, mm -hmm. you know, role play it out in your head and role play it out all the way to the end, even to the scary parts, role play it out. And find it, when you role play it out, there's something in that lineup that you do have the courage to do. Mm -hmm. uh, That's to right. do that one thing and um, the energy that happens uh, that that um, that begins that one step and how it leads and 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 uh, lays the ground rope, uh, uh, groundwork and attracts all the next steps in the line is powerful so that's um, so that's 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 what I, I like to do is to sort of pretend in my head even when I'm putting on an event um, I just pretend out in my head, I wrote how I want it to be. And then I find something in that, um, uh, that I like and I act on, and then this starts coming together. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Uh, we've got some, yeah, dream big. It's so good. We got some comments coming in similar to the imagination of a child. Yes. Love it. Love it. I'm reminded of, um, if anyone here has read recently Glennon Doyle's book, Untamed, she has a chapter on imagination mm -hmm. and how like really she has this question she poses, just the language she uses is great. It's something like, what is the most beautiful vision for my life? Like just asking a question like that. And, um, you know, and then starting to allow it to play out and maybe fantasizing, imagining what is it? And then feeling the energy of how good does that feel? And does that feel right for me? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, 
I, I want to ask a little bit before, you, you know, we can't let you get away without hearing a little more about this, the faith side of things. And I'm going to guess, I mean, you could tell me this isn't true for you, but you are a human being. So I'm going to guess that there were moments of, of fear, maybe in quitting your job or, you know, like those, those big key moments. And what did you do? I want to, again, I want like real concrete, like if, if, if you used affirmations or what did you do to help yourself um, rise over the fear or transcend it? Yes, fear is a powerful anchor, mm. um, a powerful anchor. It will keep you in situations that make you miserable and things that you know are not right for you. Um, it will have you acting in the most illogical way. It's just so powerful. Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't think I have a canned answer for it. It just depends. Um, sometimes it's, um, is to just go for it and have a full on Academy Award winning breakdown. Okay. Just go. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Those are important. Please talk about that. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Before Grit and Grace Day last year, and I was just, I was tired. I was traveling. I was drama at the office and, and you know, the, 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 it wasn't coming together. The ticket sales weren't, you know, weren't what they were, where I wanted them to be. And I just thought about like, what a huge mistake. Uh, maybe it was a week out, a week and a half out, and I just was like, this was the dumbest idea. Um, why can't I, why do I go for this stress? You know, why, why am I doing this? You know, you question yourself. And I was, I was so upset. I was so just very fearful that I was going to fail. And, and I was, um, very emotional and I could feel, feel the, the frog in my throat. And I was in the, I was getting ready for work. I had to drive all the way out to uh, the suburbs and I was in the mirror. I was like, you better not cry. You just put on this mascara, okay? <laughs> better not cry, Cheryl Jackson. You better, you know, I was like bullying myself. And then finally I was like, this is not grace. I am not offering myself grace. And I decided just to go ahead and just, you know, go for gold, okay? <laughs> I went for the Oscar in my meltdown. Mm -hmm. I did, and then I went and got myself some bacon uh, because, you know, the two go together, bacon and meltdowns. And I love bacon <laughs> from the South. I'm in Memphis right now. So, um, and I did that. Um, had the meltdown, you know, that's so cleansing and cathartic, you know, just like right. where out. And then I went for my comfort food. It was a bacon and egg sandwich with a juicy kind of buttery bun bread. Got a cup of coffee, you know, just kind of quiet. And, you know, your fighting spirit, spirit will come back. But what you gain in that moment is perspective. Mm -hmm. And so your energy shifts and you gain perspective. Um, your faith is renewed. Uh, and, uh, and you, 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 move forward and, um, and you figure it out. Mostly you figure it out, it's the perspective, losing perspective. And so sometimes instead of trying to power through, you're really just trying to ignore your way through. And you know the answer isn't to power through or ignore your way through. It's just to lean into that moment, get through it, just you know, get rid of it. Um, and, and then you're, and, and hit the pause button. I like, I talk about this a lot, hitting the pause button. When you offer yourself grace and you practice grace with yourself, the main benefit of it is, um, it, you know, regained perspective and clarity. And with that new perspective, you can yes. come back and say either this is not my battle to fight or you with the new perspective, this, that, or this is the right battle. I, I'm feeling better and I'm refreshed. Or you come back and say, you know what, this is not my fight. Uh, let me put my energy elsewhere. So perspective is so important. And I know when I'm losing perspective because my sense of humor goes. Like, nothing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Like. 
And I actually, I've been talking about this very subject lately. So I'm so glad you brought it up because especially right now, people are hitting breaking points. A lot of bacon out there. Yes, yes. Um, and so when you're hitting a breaking point, there's an opportunity for a breakthrough, for sure. But if you try to resist it, you stay stuck. And so I, I love the way that you describe it, the Academy Award winning, like just, you know, drama. Yes. yes. Cry, weep like a child. I, I'm standing in my home office right now where I've done that during quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just feeling all the emotions. And what, what I explain to my clients about this is like, look, our emotions are energy and it just needs to move through you. And once it moves through you, you can breathe again, you can relax again um, and have that perspective, you know? And it is, um, I loved how you talked about, like you just did things that were kind for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm going through this. I'm gonna have some comfort food. I'm gonna get some coffee. I'm gonna do the things that feel good to me. And then, so that's bringing in like love of yourself, compassion for yourself. And when you do that, you do, it just happens. It's like you move back towards faith. Right. It, it's part of it. And so we think this is something we're not allowed to do. I think there's so much in our society in terms of messages that we shouldn't feel our emotions and, you know, business is about, you know, not having that. Um, but I think what that does, if we live that way, that's when we are disconnected from our heart. And you were talking earlier about people who get two in their heads and they're making their choices from here, the head. Um, but that's where we become, um, we're no longer compassionate in our choices. We make choices that are about just money and, and we harm the earth and we do things that are, are not like fully expressing our full humanity. Right. Um, and so staying next to the heart. Go ahead. The way I deal with fear is, and we had a discussion at, uh, during the Pivot Conference and um, Callie Kerr, who's on this, um, she's participating, she's in the chat or in the attendee. She's a uh, therapist, a uh, very good friend of mine. We talked about, and she talked about, um, another way to get through fear is to um, be clear about what's on the other side of fear, what you're, what you're wanting, what you're desiring. Mm -hmm. uh, That's great. That whatever, you, whatever the fear is that you're dealing with, um, uh, focus on what's on the other side of that. And it can be a real motivator. So fear can be a real motivator um, to kind of push through it. If you focus on what's on the other side, that's when I, when I role play in my head, that's what I focus on. Um, uh, it's what's on the other side. And so, um, that's, uh, that's important. Also emotions are, you know, it's, it's the way it's, it's the text messages from your soul is trying <laughs> to communicate with you. Okay. Like, Hey, Hey, we got a different plan over here. So we need to have a little talk, a little chat. So, um, and when you just ignore that, you know, you're not in tune, um, you're right. not aware, right. um, the stakes, you know, get increased. And uh, cause your, your soul will always win. That's right. That's right. And it's a big area of coaching I do is helping people get back in touch with their emotions because we've been taught to shut them off for right. sure. Right. For sure. Um, I, we, we only just have a couple minutes here left. And so, uh, there's a, there's a couple, um, questions. I just really, from my heart, given what's happening in the world now, want to ask you and be able to share with the audience. Um, you know, we're going through big change right now in the world. There's clearly an awakening in consciousness that's been going on for a while in various forms. And we have this not that it's news to many of us who've been aware of racial issues in the United States, but there's for all of us um, a higher consciousness happening and a higher desire to be a part of that and to help and to, to do something. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have anything that you would say that this awakening, are you seeing anything or do you have any perspective of how is that impacting people gaining clarity of their path? Hmm. Breathe that is a big question, I know, but I really would love to hear what you think. Um, this um, opening, this breaking open moment. Um, uh, my good friend Callie told me about the book Broken Open by Elizabeth Lesser. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those moments. Um, it's a big broken open moment. 
and it is having a different impact on this impacting people differently. Um, one, I, uh, I think that, and not that I'm trying to speak for all black people, but there does seem to be a common thread in the communications um, and the messages you hear from um, uh, African Americans from all over the country and blacks from around the world that for all of these years, you, you felt like for a good reason, you've had to have wear a mask. You know, it's funny that we were in uh, the virus time of the coronavirus where you have to wear a mask to protect yourself. Well, it's been the same case for black people. We've had to put on an emotional mask um, to protect ourselves. Um, you know, whether you're at work or in social settings, you, you just couldn't share the, the pain that, um, the pain of injustice and, 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 and unfairness uh, that you're experiencing. Um, so the ability to take off the mask, it just, you feel so much lighter. Even if the problems aren't solved and these problems are gonna take a long time to fix and, and solve, and, but the ability to just take off the mask and say, this is what I feel and this is who I am um, is tremendous. A lot of that is, is going on. The other thing that's happening is that, um, um, that the eyes and hearts of a lot of uh, white people um, are being opened. And that's, it has been, I, it, I've never witnessed this this, bef this before. And so open to understanding um, and owning responsibility to help fix it. So I kind of call it um, that there, this is such a period of grace that's happening that um, black people are able to offer themselves grace by sharing their heart, taking off the mask and sharing the heart. And, uh, and why people are extending grace mm -hmm. by being willing to listen, understand, and uh, owning their part in fixing this. And so uh, it's painful. It's a painful, painful process. Uh, but uh, in some instances, it feels lighter. Um, it feels lighter. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, thank you for that perspective. It's really beautiful for people on each side as a white person, I would agree absolutely with what I heard from my experience um, and to hear as a black woman, your experience, it enlightens me so much. So I just really appreciate that thoughtful perspective. Thank you. Thank you. And I am so excited for, for the change that's coming and um, us all working together to, to do that. I feel it. I feel you can taste it in the air, you know, um, a summer, uh, day or afternoon and the rain comes, you can smell it and the taste the rain. That's how I, I feel about change. You can taste it. Mm. Yeah. Amen to that. Um, the next episode that I'm doing um, in two weeks from now is going to be, uh, it's titled How to Apply Your Genius to um, support anti-racism efforts. Mm. And so that's gonna be a little different format. I'm still testing out this series and what's gonna be, maybe it's gonna be a mix of ways, but uh, how that's gonna go is it's gonna be actually a Zoom meeting where people can appear instead of the webinar format. And I'm gonna talk about genius and what is genius and, and, and have us all tap in a little bit more to what our genius is. And what I think happens is you know, when we start to see activism or, or people doing things that we admire, we think we're supposed to be able to do that same thing. But actually your best thing to do is your genius. What's yours? What's yours to do? And so that's the conversation that I'm inviting us all to have is to take some time to reflect, well, what's my genius? What can I have here? Instead of getting into that comparison loop that puts us on a path that, that just isn't going to be as fulfilling and, and aligned for us. So so that's coming up in two weeks. Um, Cheryl, I wonder if there's anything you want to share that you have, is there anything you want to share that you have coming up or just, you know, having people follow you on social media or how, how can people oh, thank see you for that? Yeah. Um, I always forget that. I'm a, um, in a way, a terrible pitcher when it comes to pitching myself. Um, you can follow me on social media at uh, Cheryl Jackson, at Cheryl Jackson on Instagram and Twitter. 
on LinkedIn, it's Cheryl R. Robinson. And on Facebook, it's either Cheryl Robinson Jackson or that the Cheryl Jackson. So um, those are the three ways. I have a masterclass coming up uh, on Thursday. So if it's about uh, how to be, become a free agent, a career free agent and um, to work, you know, when I, it's basically my little life, how I work across like multiple industries and sectors, but there's a real kind of equation to that, how, how to do that, how to be industry agnostic. Um, and um, and just choose the environments you want to work in. So that's on Thursday. You can go to my website, CherylJackson.com, learn more about that masterclass. Thank you so much, Gina. Oh. Are, would we, are we meditating, levitating? What, yes, what? yeah, levitating would be great. If you're a <laughs> levitator, that's invited. Um, yeah, so we're going to take our last uh, 10 minutes here, and I'm going to just um, do a guided meditation and offer everyone to... Um, write in uh, an intention for themselves. So Cheryl, please, you're welcome to stay, whatever feels comfortable for you, we'd love to have you. Um, yeah, but thank you so much for your time and sharing your story um, and your insight. So much insight just came through. Um, now you're also in this coaching world too, so you're very in the know about the, the tricks of the trade and how we can get clarity to be on our true, true north path. If it helps, I'll turn my video off so it doesn't distract you oh okay great well then we will all see you uh hopefully on your master class or on social media and uh thanks again cheryl everybody thanks, can everybody in chat. thanks chat for supporting me yes yeah throw chats any comments for cheryl she'll be able to see them mm -hmm. Bye. okay thanks cheryl <sighs> all right everyone hello again I'm uh, going to take these last few minutes to integrate whatever wisdom really was here for you. And for everyone, it's going to look a little different. Um, you know, we talked about um, times of, of uncertainty, um, times of unrest, times of change, and how those impact us. And um, as you sit here, you know, one of those those starting points might just be, well, like, what is it for me right now? Like just kind of internally asking the question, like, what is the crossroads I'm at? Is it a time of confusion or am I looking at how I want to be an activist or uh, do I want to start my own business and I don't know how or make a change and I don't know how. So let's just take a minute and breathe and center. If you're comfortable to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. And I'm just going to guide here. Let's take three deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. Again, take an inhale through the nose. And exhale, feel your shoulders drop a little bit. One more big inhale through the nose and exhale. Place one hand on your heart. And if you'd like, place the other on your belly, just connecting with your heart and your soul. And breathing and letting go. Bringing your energy to your heart space. And asking your heart, what is the clarity that I'm seeking right now? What's the clarity that I'm seeking right now? Letting an answer just arise within. And then asking your soul, what is the highest vision for my life? 
the most beautiful vision for my life in this area that I see clarity. Asking yourself now, what do I need to release to step into this vision? And then asking, what do I need to embrace to step into this vision. One more question. Is there anything more I need to know? When you're ready, gently open your eyes, very gently. Okay, now we are going to take these last few minutes to write an intention out of whatever came forward in that meditation. And so if you have a sheet of paper and a pen, or type it on your phone. Just trust whatever comes through. I'm going to give you a couple sample intentions. Intention statements, you know, remember how Cheryl and I discussed um, your thoughts and your words create your reality. And so what you're thinking and what you're saying is shaping your experiences. And so if you have a statement, a very simple statement or a set of statements that talk about the, the way that you want to feel and what you want to experience and the essence of it, not the goal, but the essence of it, you begin to create that reality for yourself. The moment you write it down and you claim it, even if you don't a thousand percent believe it. Oh, great. Somebody's already written down an intention in the notes. Uh, Caroline says, my intention is for my gifts to be seen in a larger positive platform. Beautiful, beautiful. A um, couple of examples of intention I, I want to share that um, just to give you some more ideas. So hers did have an outcome that was a part of her intention. Intentions can also just be about the essence of the experience, sort of releasing that outcome. Um, as I read earlier, an intention I wrote uh, a couple months ago when the quarantine started was, I am whole and focused in a single clear beam of light. And for me, that was not ready to claim an outcome. That was saying I'm in a state of wholeness and I'm focused. And so that was the essence of what I wanted to experience. So those are two different ways to approach writing an intention, one with the outcome and one that's just the essence and the energy of it, letting the outcome be released. And when you stay in intention with I am and in front of it in the present tense, you're claiming it um, not so much as a goal, but as a prayer, as a this is the essence of me. This is who I am. This is what I am creating. And so it has a powerful spiritual connotation to it. A um, couple other intentions. Um, I release the past and trust the future. This is an intention that can speak really well to letting go of either despair or anxiety. Um, I know that a lot of people right now are swinging emotionally, which um, 
as we talked about, our emotions are healthy to listen to, but if it becomes, um, you know, just because of circumstances and you want to be more steadied, um, you can claim an intention about how you want to, um, you know, release those thoughts of the past and release the worry about the future. Um, just checking to see if anybody else wants to plug in their intention, we'd love to witness you. Hopefully you guys are all writing something down right now. Um, and one more intention I can share. Uh, I am present in the moment with joy. I am present in the moment with joy. So again, there's no outcome whatsoever attached to that, but that's making a claim that going forward, whatever you're doing, joy is at the essence. And here's what's amazing about that. When you're in that state of joy, you are then attracting all of the things that you do feel and that are like a physical form that you desire, whether it's people or resources or those sorts of things. So from that state of presence and joy, that becomes your reality. I talk a little bit more about that um, in my Unleash Your Genius Guidebook, which you can download on my website, ginamorana.com. A um, couple other things I wanna mention as we're wrapping up and you're writing your intentions. Um, somebody just pop up on my screen. Um, the next event, as I mentioned, it just got published today, is happening on June 22nd um, in our series. And so you can also check that out on my website. Um, I also, for anyone who's leaving uh, this session even more curious, wanting to go even deeper in creating clarity, I am offering right now what I call clarity sessions. I don't usually just offer one coaching session with me, but I found that right now people are really needing like a breakthrough moment and wanting um, you know, to just have a breakthrough and come up with the next action steps and maybe a spiritual practice to support doing something courageous or making a change at this time because so many of us are going through change. And so those clarity sessions uh, are one hour and I coach you with my intuitive guidance. I'm very intuitive when it comes to career paths and business. Um, it's part of uh, feminine energy and creativity that I'm quite tapped into as part of my coaching practice. Um, but then also really practical advice for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish as part of that session. Um, offering, whether it's opening my network and making business connections for you for whatever your goal is, um, or helping you write out what are those next steps. Those are often, you know, the most important pieces to moving forward from whatever you get out of your session. So that's an option you can check out as well. And then um, some of those questions I asked in that guided meditation come from what is known as a visioning practice. And if you check out my um, page on the Insight Timer app, uh, hopefully some of you are familiar with that, meditators here, um, I offer a guided um, meditation practice where you're asking those questions about the highest vision of my life, what do I need to release, what do I need to embrace in order to step into that. That's a guided practice. I think it's 11 minutes long. It's got music that goes along with it. And it's a great practice for continuing to tune into clarity. Um, and, and you take a little more time and the music helps to create more centeredness. So those are some great resources that hopefully can help you, again, moving from lack of clarity or confusion into your genius zone. And also um, if there's a faith crisis going on to help you tune more into your faith. Um, I wanna leave us with a quote tonight. Um, oh, great. We had a comment by Tisha. I wish my eyes were a little better and I could read this a little better. Um, thank you so much. Oh, this is great. This was amazing. Thank you, Gina. Um, a comment from Audrey. I'm here in the physical universe to continue to empower the people I love and act as a mentor or muse based upon my years of experience, the wise woman with grit and grace. Look at that. What a beautiful intention. Thank you, Audrey, for sharing that. That's really, that's really beautiful. Um, okay. So leaving you with this prayer from the book, um, a Return to Love by Marianne Williams, this very brief prayer that I think captures what we talked about tonight and what we're all after. Dear God, 
your universe, your angels. Please give my life some sense of purpose. Use me as an instrument of your peace. Use my talents and abilities to spread love. I surrender my job, my career to you. Help me to remember that my real job is to love the world back to health. Thank you very much. Amen. Thanks everyone for being here. See you in a couple of weeks. Love to you and may your genius flourish in these coming weeks. Take care. Bye.